Hi everyone. Everyone? The truth to the beat. Hi guys, I'm Marie Emiliore and I welcome you to my channel. Today we're talking about the whole my spring and not so spring perfumes. So let let me explain. Let me explain first. The truth be told, I started a no-buy year at the in the middle of October, but you'll see why. <laughs> because I bought so many perfumes during last fall that as soon as I realized that I, I just gotta stop, I have to like push breaks, almost go cold, cold turkey for a while. And I put aside a few purchases that were kind of frivolous, blind buys and kind of like almost emotional in a way. Those purchases I knew would be the most useful to open and wear and test in spring and summer just by at least reading their fragrance pyramids and kind of like understanding their olfactory profiles. So I just put them aside, hid from my own self, and I thought, you know what? At like during the spring of 2020, I will be probably really missing shopping and it will be nice to kind of like, it's almost get like a second Christmas, you know, reintroduce them as if I got them as a gift then. So basically, yes, I put aside some of my fall purchases, didn't open them, didn't look at them, tried to forget that I had them stashed away till the middle of spring and this is, hence the whole that I'm showing you now. So all of these perfumes, I'm planning to test wear and actually get my reviews out for you this spring. So if you're in particular, if you're interested in anything uh, specific, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to get you at least like an Instagram review or maybe like a dedicated video if time permits. We're gonna start with a, a basically here you're gonna see a bunch of forgotten classics. A lot of these perfumes are really affordable, really cheap, especially if you hunt online. Yet at the in the past they were quite popular, no less popular than like Flora Gucci or um, any other kind of springy like floral perfumes, but now even though they're much cheaper than one you can buy in Sephora, almost nobody talks about them. So I wanted to kind of rediscover those you know, 10 year old, 15 year old releases and see like, do they still stand the test of time? Are they as good as, as that, let's say proverbial Gucci Flora or not? So the first one, you can buy it for, I think like $15. Uh, this is Elizabeth Arden Mediterranean. So this is supposed to be, I even have, look at that. Yep, we're gonna, I'm gonna unpackage it on camera. The Mediterranean is supposed to be this beautiful seaside, kind of like Tropicana slash seaside resort feel. That's what's supposed to give us. Not gonna lie, the color and the shape of the bottle alone, it really looks like a sea glass, doesn't it? Um, really seduced me. I'm, I was surprised to find that there's absolutely no writing on the bottle. Usually, like these days, we expect, you know, the name of the fragrance to be somewhere in the bottle. There's nothing here. It's very minimal in terms of having labels on it, which I guess makes, makes it almost more more elegant that way, right? Like there's not much of branding here. So Elizabeth Arden proposes that we use this for either going on a vacation or creating a vacation feeling, right? Like when sometimes we had a vacation planned and it didn't happen. You know what I'm talking about. Well, let's see. I know this fragrance is supposed to be kind of like sandalwood fruity floral. To be honest, what I smell is kind of like more like a bub bubble gum smell. It's not the most natural combination. It d does not even come close to kind of like more realistic Joe Malone scents that are inspired by fruits and florals. This is way, that way simpler. I would say this has a definite undeniable synth synthetic DNA to it, but it's not bad. It's not too sweet. You know, sometimes fruity fragrances tend to be sugary, cloyingly, almost sticky. This is not that. 
and it has I don't know what it is and I don't have notes um, accessible right now but Mediterranean Buzz by Elizabeth Arden has this odd either minty or some kind of salty dry flavor to it the fruits are definitely there but what is this soothing kind of like it's like soft spearmint I don't know something gives me that impression I do like it I do not however find it to be particularly memorable or signature so to speak however given the fact that you can get how much do we have here 100 mil you can get this very stylish beautiful 100 mil bottle of summery fruits for like 15 bucks for the price and for the packaging aspect of it i would say it's actually much better than a lot of things i smelled in sephora again for though at least for those factors but i don't know I, i'll have to wear it and tell you later whether it actually is wearable every day in charming fruity or you know like annoying simple and bland fruity that i can't tell right now that i will probably need a little bit more time with it the second one, a very similar concept. And again, look, look at these colors. I feel like they almost, and the shapes, you almost like want to make like a watercolor painting of these bottles. They are so stylish and cheerful at the same time. So this is Kenzo, the king of aquatic perfumes from the 90s. So the breakthrough for the Kenzo brand after their entrance with spices of a jungle, the, the elephant and then the them becoming the king of aquatics with La Parc Kenzo. And here my camera actually died, saving you from 30 minutes of rumbling. What I was trying to say that the third wave of Kinzo popularity came in 2000s, early 2000s, through a flower line where they very successfully exploited i guess in the best sense of that word the japanese culture uh, referencing some iconic notes of rice powder cherry blossoms wild prune blossoms as well so i got this flanker kinzur amur make me fly and despite very promising notes this is truly a very synthetic kind of synthetic cherry blossom plus soapy white musk scent honestly i wish there was some kind of environmental police against flankers like that because they in my not so humble opinion they add zero value to the diversity of uh, fragrance market they waste a lot of resources they are very forgettable and just they really do no justice or no favors to the brand or the line itself and true it's just the perfumes like that to me personally is just a waste of resources are they horrible no are they really worth talking about longer than one minute no it's got a joyful a perfume that i didn't hear a lot about didn't see in the stores at all somehow the whole escada line that was so popular at the end of the 90s and the beginning of 2000s kind of like to me very quickly dissipated they had their popularity like 15 minutes of fame with all of their flankers of rio de janeiro and all of this tropical party kind of flankers but their more serious atepsid perfumes kind of didn't really appeal to me that much to be honest so when I opened for Grantica and just read comments of people about Escada Joyful because I found it for a really affordable price, the, the comments were raving. And it was very surprising because it's not really talked about much. The first things first, the packaging. I must say I'm blown away by the fact that for this price, packaging looks very expensive. This is a teeny tiny bottle. This is 30 mil, I think, right? This is 30 milliliters that I got, but it's very heavy. It feels very substantial. Every single facet of the bottle is very smooth. The, 
it's very surprisingly tastefully done. I would expect something like that from a way more expensive bottle of perfume. So I must say I do enjoy the form factor of it way more than I anticipated. When it comes to the fragrance itself, let's actually refresh it. Similar kind of like spring fruity flowery profile. Should be easy to wear, possibly very forget, kind of like forgetful, not memorable. But you see, I like this way more than the previous ones that we talked about. It's here the freshness I feel is given by either some sour berries or apple. So like it feels like this kind of like a little bit of sourness of crisp apple juice. And then when it comes to flowers, I actually do kind of believe that in, in, in the individual floral notes here, way more than the, than the previous perfumes where it was all just mixed synthetic flat base, you know, kind of like, you know, like if you could imagine like a flower molecule that is just like you put in the alcohol and that's it. Here, the perfume actually, the joy, how is it called again? Joyful, Joyful by Scott actually has dimension. You do want to understand what flower is this? Is it lily of the valley? Is it this? Is it that? Is it lotus? Is it water lily? I wonder. So like it's interesting to observe and it's not annoying and it's not flat. What's even more fascinating to me that when it dries down, it you feel this very elegant, almost like moss, mossy, note kind of picking up and that's a little bit more more velvety a little bit more almost a little bit more serious you don't expect that from a perfume with that kind of like light kind of reckless you know flirtatious beginning so yeah so far i'm very excited to wear this more and like report back to you later uh, the next one is just a body lotion that I got by Salvador Dali. I absolutely adore their Sea and Sun in Kadakus, which is a very light, bergamotty, citrusy, kind of Mediterranean breeze perfume. I have a huge bottle, like I think 120 ml, and I decided to get myself a body lotion because I really like how it smells and I hoped that with the body lotion I could make it last longer on my skin. Unfortunately, I must say I have two body lotions from Salvador Dali and both of them are horrendous. Just awful, just god awful. I don't know who does their body lotion formulation, but they should definitely do a, a revamp, like a formula revamp. They smell almost nothing like the perfumes, first of all. Second of all, they are very kind of like mineral oil, like very liquidy, they don't really moisturize. They also have this really weird other smells that come in addition to the, you know, the perfume DNA that just ruin it all. It's just, it's not a good experience at all, not in terms of moisturizing the skin, uh, skin nor for the perfume aspect of it. So if you're thinking about getting some of the Salvador Dali body lotions, I would reconsider at this point. So that was definite fail. Next one is I was trying to find this springy, summery rose perfume because 2020 is the year of rose. We see rose absolutely everywhere. It's dominating all of the new releases. It's making a huge comeback. After spending a few years dedicated to Tube Rose, the 2020 is undoubtedly a rose year. So I was thinking, I was trying to find something light but not sour. I, I hate when, when the rose scents turn acidic like almost vinegarish or when they turn almost like sour oil that also like is not my cup of tea so i either like gourmand roses kind of parfait roses or or fresh flying roses the ones that are kind of either a little bit powdery or very 
bergamot tea, you know, like very, very fresh. So I was looking for some, some morning, morning white rose scent. And reading the reviews about Aqua Allegoria line of Guerlain, which has, I think, seven or ten different rose uh, colognes, it was very hard to choose. So this, the Rosa Pop, this is the one that I end up choosing. This came as one of the best regarded for morning rose scent. To be honest, not sure, I don't really know because it's, they, they all seem very similar, at least on paper. So let me know if you have several, several rows of the toilets from Aqua Allegoria. What can I say? So far, it's this is the worst. <laughs> I thought I would say that make me fly away is the worst. No, this is the rock bottom of fl floral uh, kind of like body sprays. This is just so annoyingly synthetic, so flat that it's almost just hard to bear. This is about the worst version of a eau de toilette, like morning rose that I've ever experienced. There is a way to maybe dilute it or maybe put it on a towel, you know, like find a use for this scent that is more of like a room spray, linen spray. I do think when it wears longer or maybe when it sits on the skin for longer that it softens and it kind of blends with with the skin chemistry it it becomes a little bit more believable but on the blotter this is just sad and to be honest i noticed that with a lot of aqua allegories by guerlain it seems that they th this line was infamous for before we, before I knew L'Artisan Parfumeur, before we knew about a lot of other beautiful cologne lines and eau de toilettes, including Jo Malone, including Prada, Effusions de Prada. Aqua Allegoria was a go-to line for refreshing Soli florals uh, or, you know, like all of these kind of like simple three note refreshing eau de toilette colognes, these scents that you just spray and go because they were so breathable, so light, so believable and so natural. But I feel with the recent years they become more and more like just these chemical substances that get put into like detergents, you know, laundry detergents. This is just so disappointing. I really hoped for something truly effervescent and watercolor-ish. But this, I don't know. Not good first impressions. I will give it a go for sure. I'm not the one to ditch a perfume just because I didn't like it from the first go. But we'll see. We'll see. All right. <laughs>